Our story begins in 1930, during the time of our nation's worst economic turmoil, the Great Depression, banks failing, wages cut, and millions out of work. Durham, North Carolina, a rural tobacco town, experienced the same. And yet, it was a place undergoing a vibrant transformation led by James B. Duke. Duke's incredible vision was to build a medical center and medical school right here where I stand today. His seemingly improbable dream was to create a world-class medical institution that would focus on the combined missions of education, research, and the delivery of exceptional patient care. It would rival the likes of Johns Hopkins, Emory, and Harvard. But without their long-standing reputations, how would Duke attract the best and the brightest faculty? The answer lied in our greatest strengths, ingenuity, commitment, and optimism. And visionaries like Dr. Wilbur Davison, Dr. Gene Stead, and Dr. Daryl Hart. Duke's early medical pioneers, who exhibited these qualities tenfold. As a young man, Dr. Hart wasn't interested in a full-time faculty position at Duke, but he would consider a part-time teaching role that allowed him to care for his own private patients. Within a week, I was off at the place at Duke and came down here to see it. It was made clear that it was up to us as to what the educational program and the uh, uh, medical program in the hospital would be, but they were providing the facilities. I did not see how it could fail. I felt if it did fail, it would be because those of us who came let it fail. The challenge of attracting young physician scientists to not only teach and conduct research, but also to deliver first-class medical care still loomed large. In 1931, Dr. Hart and his colleagues devised a plan, an innovative compromise that we know now as the private diagnostic clinic. For Dr. Hart, failure was not an option. Those first uh, physicians set a standard, a very high standard, and there was a dedication in that place that you couldn't match anywhere else. Um, it, was, it was just phenomenal. The model he described was of uh, people having a clinical practice separate and distinct from their university obligations, but with a commitment to the things that a university wants to do, teaching and research. In exchange for a prestigious title for their academic service, the clinical faculty received a token university salary. Funds from their clinical practices would be pooled together instead of going to each individual clinician. The combined dollars paid for the clinical faculty and provided important capital to support and improve the medical center. I don't think there was a single person to whom we offered a position who did not accept it. They're essentially paying their own salaries and setting aside money to build buildings, to, to fund programs. They made a commitment to funding the basic science programs here, which they did. The PDC generated tens of millions of dollars in support of hiring faculty, of running research programs, of building the buildings that you see around us. In return, a promise was made that physicians alone would control the PDC and that all would serve as faculty of the School of Medicine. The PDC supports the doctors. Dr. Hart had a lot of vision and he was able to negotiate and for him to build the PDC as a force was very insightful. We would not have been able to grow either in a clinical sense or an academic sense uh, without uh, the support of the PDC. The PDC, both for me as well as some of my peers, provided salary support for individuals that were going to spend significant research time developing programs as opposed to supporting uh, their own salary through private practice. The common goal was take care of patients, build a medical center, do all the things that the PDC's done. Without the PDC in our lives, I don't think Duke would be anywhere near what it is now. It was an engine that helped the whole system to work. 
Today, Duke Health, strengthened by the PDC's 1,500 physicians and providers, continues to be recognized as one of the world's top medical institutions. Achieving this success would come as no surprise to Dr. Hart, who imagined early on the great advancements the PDC and its physician members would make. I think the brightest years of Duke are immediately ahead when I'm expecting tremendous things both in the medical center and the university as a whole. I hope that they'll go from one high point to another still higher uh, over the years ahead. And I see no reason why they shouldn't. We honor Dr. Hart and all of the physicians who came before us for their generosity, dedication, and innovative spirit. The PDC continues to thrive with a willingness to cooperate, negotiate, and advocate for what's best for our patients. Today, we're caring for more than one million patients each year, not just on our campus, but also in locations around the region. Right now, there are nearly 80 PDC locations with more on the way. Our unity as physicians gives us the leverage we need to ensure resources and opportunities exist for the next 85 years and beyond as we continue our greatest quest to advance the future of healthcare.